I don't even want to think about the litigious possibilities, Frank. We could be up to our ears in lawsuits. The affiliates won't carry it. The affiliates will kiss your ass if you can hand them a hit, show. The popular reaction. We don't know the popular reaction. That's what we have to find out. The New York Times? The New York Times doesn't advertise on our network. All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. We're not a respectable network. We're a whorehouse network. We have to take whatever we can get. Well, I don't want any part of it. I don't fancy myself the president of a whorehouse. Okay, Ted, what's the problem? Hello, Betty. What's the problem? I haven't got a problem. I've got fucking problems. Plural. One away, Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to stop hundreds of tons of radioactive groundwater from seeping into the Pacific Ocean every day. Crews have started pumping some of the water from the ground as a temporary measure to contain the leak. Government officials say about 1,000 tons of groundwater could be flowing from a hillside into the soil below the plant every day. Of that, about 300 tons filters through a contaminated area and is laced with radioactive substances. Then it seeps into the sea. Another 300 tons bypasses the contaminated area. The remaining 400 tons of water is leaking into the basements of the buildings housing reactors 1 to 4. That water is also contaminated and it's being pumped out and stored. The crews at the plant have been injecting soil hardening chemicals into the ground on part of the site to stop the water leaking into the ocean. But there are concerns this effort may be pushing water levels higher above the barrier. TEPCO workers are trying to counter this effect by pumping out some of the water from a new well. They are also planning to sink about 30 5 meter long pipes into the ground. Workers will use the pipes to pump out groundwater starting next week. They hope to drain 100 tons per day. Long term, they are considering freezing the soil beneath the buildings. Crews would bury pipes and inside them circulate coolant kept at minus 40 degrees Celsius. The frozen soil would act as a dam to prevent groundwater from reaching the contaminated area. But it could take one to two years to complete the project and maintaining the cooling operations will be extremely costly. This is steam billowing up from Reactor 3, MOX Plutonium, Fukushima Daiichi, July the 26th, 2013. This is the most toxic substances known to man floating in the air above Reactor 3. See the steam billowing out here? This is over two years and it's still billowing out steam. This comes after TEPCO and the Japanese government have admitted that the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactors have been leaking into the ocean this entire time. 400 gallons per day. This is very serious, folks. Top of Reactor 3, 4th floor. This is radioactive steam bellowing out. See how it stained the, stained the, ground, the crane here, the metal crane? This is the day before. This is the 25th. You can see the steam is bellowing out again. It doesn't stop. Day after day after day. Ever since the fire they had on July the 5th, 2013, these radioactive steam releases have been an ongoing problem. Why is this such a concern? Well, it blows in the wind. Wherever the wind goes, this stuff goes. Where it lands, nobody knows. But you can guess that it's going to wash out in rain. So if you're downwind and it rains, there's a very high probable chance this contamination is there. I live in Calgary, Alberta, and I just did a soil sample at 57 CPM at a 10 minute average. I get spikes anywhere from 80 CPM 
down to 10 CPM. Average background should be around 10 to 18 CPM here for my area. Uh, anything over 50 CPM is abnormal. 100 CPM is alert level. 300 CPM is evacuation. And here we see steam billowing out. Radioactive steam. I am at TEPCO's web page. You could also find this web page if you go there. There's billowing out. See how it's stained red? Red and brown and black. It's just going consecutively, consecutively down this list. We got one more left after this one. This one's on the 24th. So I've showed you the 26th, the 25th, and now we're on the 24th. And steam is still billowing up. Three to five days to reach the west coast of North America. The jet stream blows west to east over the Pacific Ocean. It is August the 8th, 2013 today. The steam is just billowing out of Reactor 3 MOX Plutonium, which is 2 million times more toxic than the reactor at Chernobyl. Yeah, the MOX Plutonium is recycled spent fuel. Once the nuclear material has been in the core for over a year to four years, it's, it's abstracted and called spent fuel fuel. It's a million times more toxic than when it went in because the fission process destroys natural occurring elements and makes man-made elements which mimic minerals that our bodies and other life forms need to survive. The cells of living organisms cannot tell the difference between iron or plutonium or cesium or potassium or strontium or calcium so it takes the calcium and deposits it in your bones or your teeth or the strontium 90 in your bones in your teeth this radioactive strontium will cause leukemia bone cancer Now, this is July the 23rd now, so 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, radioactive steam is bellowing out of reactor 3 MOX plutonium into the atmosphere. We, have, we know it's been leaking into the ocean for over two years, but this is a little different because this goes into the air into our lungs or into the ground from the rain boom steam shot right up so has has reactor 3 gone critical yes it had the very first day it exploded it went critical this was a core explosion to two kilometers in the air and this reactor alone is two million times more toxic than Chernobyl, which has killed a million people, and eight million people today are negatively affected. It happened in 1986. It's 185 tons, one reactor. Fukushima is four reactors, 1,700 plus tons, plus spent fuel, plus MOX plutonium. The toxicity of these substances are millions of times greater than that of Chernobyl. The size of this is, is 10 times bigger just by the fuel amount at 1,700 plus tons compared to Chernobyl at 185 tons. Chernobyl was the biggest environmental catastrophe ever to happen in the history of mankind and it was going to last it is going to last 
hundreds of thousands of years. We won't see the worst of Chernobyl till 20 generations. Okay, now we're inside Reactor 2. You can see more videos here if you go to Fukushima or, T or TEPCO, uh, TEPCO's website. So here's more steam on the 18th. This is July the 18th. Steam billowing out of Reactor 3, MOX Plutonium. When this first was observed by TEPCO, they lied, of course. They always do. They said, oh, it's just rain, water that is evaporating, nothing to worry about. Okay, bullshit. We're, nobody believes TEPCO anymore because they lied for three months after these meltdowns happened and said there was no meltdown. Meanwhile, they didn't, they didn't evacuate uh, past the 13-kilometer range. Potentially killing millions. A very slow death that is hard to pinpoint and say it was because you breathed nuclear materials. Because of the deniability and because of the cost of, of evacuating so many people, they didn't. The nuclear industry is the most murderous industry in the world. They have made the World Health Organization... Their World Health Organization is not allowed by from a gag order signed in 1959 saying that they cannot report anything negative towards the nuclear industry and with the health consequences. That's why Chernobyl hasn't come, the, the true consequences haven't come out, only by private scientists or independent scientists. And over 2,000 of them say about a million people have died. Some even say it's more than that at 1.5 million people. With 8 million people negatively affected today, 90% of the children in that area are negatively affected. Born negatively affected. And as we sit here and watch Reactor 3 spew into the environment, what can we do? So here we go. This is a video of July the 17th. This is the ground. They are drilling into the ground here. These are drills. And they, they're going 1.8 meters into the ground to try to stop the radioactive water from leaking into the Pacific Ocean. I say it's a little too late. The worst has already happened. But they're going to dump concrete, drill these holes, and dump concrete down to make a wall to try to stop this from happening. But we know it's going to happen. Anyways, the tunnels are deeper than 1.8 meters. The tunnels that go to the turbine buildings. So now there's talk of them freezing. Freezing the ground around these reactors. Well, they're going to freeze the ground. The water will build up behind it and create the buildings to be unstable. Not to mention the freezing of water expands and cracks and it upheaves the ground. What are we going to do, folks? Are we going to sit back and watch the destruction of the entire planet? Because that's what this is. Food travels everywhere. The oceans are all connected. This contamination does not go away. It only bioaccumulates. That's why they test cow's milk, because the radioactive rain falls down, the cesium mimics potassium, potassium is a fertilizer for plants, plants suck up in all the cesium thinking it's potassium, the, the plants like grass are higher radioactivity than the rain ever was because of the multiple rain outs on the grass, the cows come around long and eat all that grass time and time again. Cesium accumulates in our organs or our muscles. That's why we see all the, the heart attacks and uh, cardiac problems after Chernobyl or nuclear disasters. Is the cesium deposits in your muscle the only muscle that cannot regenerate itself? A child has a small heart muscle. 
a little bit of cesium gets in there, destroys the cells around it, creates a tiny little hole. Well, when that heart or that person grows up, that heart gets the size of a fist. That hole that was a pinhole gets to the size of a thumbnail. They call this Chernobyl heart. Holes in the kids' hearts. And a lot of them die because of it. These radionuclides, these man-made elements made on the destruction of natural elements are the crimes against humanity. And it's only going to lead to destruction. Lead to destruction of our world. They don't go away. So, as you see, there's tons of videos here. Industry ministry officials have outlined the gravity of the problem. They estimate about 300 tons of radioactive groundwater is getting into the ocean every day. They say some 1,000 tons of water flows daily from a mountainside into the ground below the plant. Of that, 300 tons accumulates in an area Temco engineers know is contaminated with radioactive substances. That's the tainted water that's leaking into the ocean. Aside from that, ministry officials say 300 tons of groundwater doesn't get contaminated and it also flows into the sea. The remaining 400 tons of water leaks into the basement of the building's housing reactors 1, 2, 3, and 4 at Fukushima Dainichi. That water becomes contaminated. TEPCO workers pump it out and store it. Industry ministry officials say their figures are based on water table data offered by TEPCO and not a detailed analysis of various data. They say they cannot rule out the possibility that contaminated groundwater started leaking into the sea just after the accident at the plant in March 2011. TEPCO so they know that's bit first of all the 300 gallons a day that's a lie uh it's it's way more than that they undershoot it and they admit that it's been happening for two years into the pacific ocean this is why we see seals and squid and fish all dying on hawaii the west coast of california the west coast of canada up in alaska the polar bears the seals all life has been affected by this. There have been reports saying that 21,000 people have died in America. Kevin Blanche says 200,000 people have died in America. This is very serious and our news is not reporting it. General Electric made these reactors and they own most of the, the media in America. Canada is one of the world's leading exporters next to Australia. The queen has 30% of her assets in uranium. The uranium from Saskatchewan made the bombs for Hiroshima. We, we're so ingrained in the nuclear industry that we won't even hear about this, even if it kills 50% of the population here. Officials admitted for the first time last month that contaminated groundwater is getting into the ocean. We have not checked the figures given by the industry ministry. We are currently unable to say how much of the groundwater is getting into the ocean. Please give us time to check on this. TEPCO managers are considering freezing the soil beneath reactor buildings. Crews would bury a number of pipes underground. Coolants kept at minus 40 degrees Celsius would be circulated inside. The frozen soil would form something like a wall and act as a dam to prevent water from getting into the contaminated area. But it would take one to two years to complete the work. Look how steamy that is. Costly to maintain Look at that. Operation. Look at that. Into the atmosphere. All this steam. This is crazy. It is nuclear genocide. But did they say that? No. They say it's safe. They say it's clean. It's the nuclear lie. The industry minister says the government will take the lead in drafting a new plan to completely halt the leakage of contaminated water. Oh. <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. 
Toshimitsu Motegi urged the members of an expert panel to work out a concrete proposal by the end of September. We have to speed up our efforts to compile feasible measures, including the possible release of water below the legal limits of contamination into the ocean. Motegi called for a study on how to pump out groundwater from the mountainside of the reactor buildings and other sites. He also suggested creating underground walls to stop the water from reaching the ocean. In May, TEPCO officials announced a similar plan to release groundwater into the sea before it gets into the plant's compounds. Fishermen are against the idea. They say it's hard to tell groundwater and contaminated water apart.